I'm here with uh, Mr. Rick Newman and Daphne Barbeto. They are both members of the Economic Development Alliance and they are both um, pretty prominent uh, figures in Puerto Rico's tourism sector. And the two of you, along with a couple of other people, are working on this strategy to bring tourism back um, post quarantine um, during the COVID-19 crisis. Um, what is it exactly, you know, in a nutshell that you are pursuing with this effort? I, I, Michelle, I think it's in, important to note that, you know, the, the tourism industry per se wasn't ordered to close. The hotels were not ordered to close. Many of them closed because there was no business. There was nobody uh, to stay in the hotels and, and there was a tremendous amount of expense related to trying to stay open. So those that closed, uh, closed because, you know, a lack of business and occupancy went to zero. Uh, in some hotels managed to retain some federal employees, uh, especially down in the southwest corner uh, because of the, the earthquake. And others uh, stayed open because they have uh, contracts with uh, airline crew. Right. Oh. Uh, but now what we want to do is bring back regular. Yep. So the alliance is uh, dedicated to the reopening to certain things happen. We need to be able to use our outdoor and our, our outside venues. And we also needed to be able to think pools are an integral part of the hotel experience, whether you're big, medium, or, or small parador, that's that's your attraction. And, and still, so even though we were able to get that, we still have some resistance uh, to, to the marketplace. And, and the resistance comes from several areas. One is the, the, uh, the curfew that goes into effect at 7 o'clock at night. So right. one of the things that we as the Alliance and that other organizations are trying to uh, motivate is that the government move uh, the curfew to start at a later time at night to give people the opportunity to visit restaurants and, and to give our restaurant market, both in the hotels and outside the hotels, the opportunity to bring in clients. Nobody wants to go to a restaurant at 5.30 and be out by 6.30 or a quarter to seven because they have to be home at seven. It's just not economically feasible for the restaurant and it's really not comfortable for the guests. Uh, the other thing is we, we need, go ahead. Do you I'm sorry, go ahead. Do you think that the curfew is still necessary? You know, in essence, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know uh, if it's necessary. Uh, you know, it's something that the medical task force has recommended and pushed the government real hard on. Uh, it's part of the government strategy to minimize the, the exposure. But I think as we move to a, uh, uh, a, a an opening of our industry uh, as tourism industry and we open Puerto Rico for business, we have to be a little bit broad-minded and very few people on space in ICU to accommodate if we were to have a, 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 ra a rash of, uh, of uh, COVID infections. So we, we have uh, the medical capacity to deal with it. We have to take a little chance. And what we are asking for is 9, 10, 11 o'clock at night, give people the chance to go for dinner and complete a dinner uh, and exaggerating uh, the, uh, uh, that's something different, but at seven o'clock, it's just not working. And the two extra hours at least uh, till nine o'clock would help the restaurant industry tremendously. Okay. Daphne, what's your take? Remember, you're on mute. Yes. But, well, basically, there's two keywords here. One is confidence and the other one is experiences. And, and due to the fact of this, you know, the curfew and the different other restrictions that are in, still in place are not allowing the industry to offer the entire, um, you know, the different opportunities and the different experiences that for an, a customer, a client that coming from the, you know, from other parts of the world to Puerto Rico, it does not make any sense to follow a curfew until 7 p.m. and still having attractions closed down and having, you know, some other services besides the hotel 
uh, that are not there. So uh, besides the local, the local residents that can take advantage of some of these offers that we're seeing that are really, really good, um, we, with these restrictions, Puerto Rico cannot really open to the rest of the world. And then you're talking also about beaches, reopening the beaches with some sort yeah. of social distancing in place. I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean that, obviously that also ties into bringing in the tourists. Sure. I mean, you know, why do people go to the Caribbean? I mean, we're, we're, the Caribbean experience is sun and fun. And, and so sun and fun has to include uh, the experience of our beautiful beaches and all our aquatic sports. And, and so we have to, we have to afford that uh, opportunity, uh, even if it's with social distancing. But I think how? people are conscious how? of the fact that you have to have social distancing. How? Uh, and because we've seen beaches reopen in other places like Florida, for example, and you see a stampede of people. How do you get people to you know, follow that social distancing requirement, not social physical distancing requirement in this case. Yeah, I mean, I, I, obviously it's not easy to do. I think if, as I look at society in Puerto Rico and I move about whether, whether it's uh, the local uh, hardware store or the, the nursery or the, uh, or the supermarket and other places that I've been, I, I think people here are a lot more disciplined than I, what I see on TV and other locations. And I think people are more conscious of the fact of social distancing, wearing masks. And I, I think we can do proper uh, public service announcements. I think we can have uh, you know, the police and the Gustos Naturales uh, patrol the beaches. I think the beaches should you know, possibly be marked off so that certain areas, no more than so many people here, no many, you know, there. But uh, the ones that, you know, beaches in front of hotels, uh, you know, they have to have a little bit different perspective uh, uh, over this thing because it's an industry. And uh, the industry has to attract uh, tourism. I mean, the other islands are, are beginning to open. Eight, eight of the competitive islands are already open in the Caribbean, and they're going to continue to open. And where are we? Well, we can't be sitting here with our arms crossed and our legs crossed and saying that, you know, we're trying to prevent an outbreak when, quite frankly, there's nothing to show that we are having a COVID issue uh, or an abundance of cases, it just doesn't seem to be happening. Uh, Daphne, you're at the yes, airport, which is one of the hot spots for tourism. Um, what's your response to traffic? I know that you're mentioning the need for a cohesive effort to draw back the airlines. Actually, you, you're part of a group that today announced the return of Iberia um, in August. So, you know, what's your take on what should be happening at the airport? I hope you can hear me because there's so many so many announcements going right now. Um, yeah, well, the, the, the real thing is that if you want to create the demand, you need to have the airlines. Uh, there's no other way that you can bring people to Puerto Rico. It's either by air or by sea. And and we, we are clear that regarding the cruise ships, we don't have anything until probably August of, of, or September, right? So there's a, a couple of more months before the cruise industry really starts from Puerto Rico. But in the case of the, of the airport, I don't know, but I'm assuming that the local government is talking to the different airlines and see how they can uh, provoke the idea of, of coming back. We are seeing other islands in the Caribbean doing that, talking to the airlines and having announcements um, saying that different airlines are coming back and, and some of the itineraries being published, but we're not seeing that in Puerto Rico. And that's obviously a concern because we don't, if we don't have air access, there's impossible way of bringing people to Puerto Rico. And at this time, as you, as you know, the, 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 the amount of people coming by air is very, very low. Very low. Actually, I have the numbers from Aerostar. They were published yesterday. Um, passenger traffic was down 89% in May. Um, according to their numbers. So who should be doing this? Is it the Puerto Rico Tourism Company? Is it the DMO? Who should be doing, who should be doing these efforts to bring back the airlines and the cruise ships? You know, the, the, uh, what we've recommended as part of the BEOC Economic Task Force is to create a small committee uh, immediately uh, 
that's made up of obviously Aerostar who manages the airport, the Ports Authority who owns the airport, the tourism company, uh, the health department of Puerto Rico and several federal agencies, uh, HHS and TSA who have a role in this as well. And together try to come up with a uh, methodology and strategies to manage the air airport, especially when it comes to the inbound traffic. We were very quick at setting up uh, cameras with thermometers. We were amongst the first for the 11 machines that were set up. They're, they're working fabulously, but then everything sort of stopped there. Uh, we need to take it to the next step because unless we, as Daphne says, open up to tourism, there's no sense in promoting, there's no sense in advertising, there's no sense in, in hitting the market with either hotel dollars, DMO dollars, tourism company dollars, because People will not book if they don't have a sense of uh, health and and and, and like we're safety. protected. Right, right. So so we have to we have to make sure that all that runs and nobody's going to come uh, to Puerto Rico if they're threatened with uh, yeah fourteen day quarantine. Uh, you know, if they're here three or four nights, they don't want to be closed up in their room for three or four right. nights. That's not the purpose of coming here. So, you know, until that is changed, uh, we are sort of, quote, dead in the water, as the cruise ship industry would say, uh, even at the airport. So all this has to happen together and it has to be given a priority. And uh, we, we need to move now from the lockdown mentality of control the COVID, which we did very well, to now the open, it's controlled. We have very few cases. Now it's time to take a bit of a risk. Daphne, show, show us, you know, the airport. Can you kind of loop around and, and show what it looks like? You're on mute. Take, 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 You're on take mute. off the mute. Hey. Keep forgetting. Um, unfortunately, it's very empty. Okay. Oh, yeah. And we didn't do the lines, you know, there's right now. And... Um, yeah, it's it's very quiet. Uh, there's a lot of space. The social physical distance is physical in place. Distance. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Um, unfortunately, um, getting back to the original question, um, as part of the alliance, right? We, I personally think that they, they have even even there has been so much effort in so many things. They Unfortunately, I don't see a, a cohesive effort within all the, all the elements. For example, you, even though there has been lots of com conversations, um, at this time, as Rick was saying, there's so many things in the way that will not allow to have a restart. In other destinations, basically, they have tell all the industry, we're going to restart X day and then allows the industry to prepare to be ready and to communicate how we're going how they're going to do it in Puerto Rico I don't know why we haven't been able you know to do something more formal more organized so everybody knows what is happening in the case of the small businesses getting back to reopen have to go through different setups that maybe a big company doesn't doesn't you know have a problem with it money wise right but a small company it, it takes more effort than 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 to others so you know i i think that we we're lacking of organization of a straight message and um and that is confusing and not only for us slow for but also if we're trying to promote it outside Puerto Rico the rates that we're seeing um, in this um, platform that sells a uh, low budget things I, I don't think it's good for the for the island either you know when you see hotels promoting such a low rates mm -hmm. even though I understand the idea I don't think it may be the right uh, strategy to to follow to tell you the truth when you compare it to other Caribbean islands you know so, and, and that and and that said so the, whose responsibility is it ultimately is it the tourism company is it the DMO well if I may add before Rick starts the the air and and sea access it's a responsibility of the tourism company. Obviously, at this time, everybody should be involved in trying to help 
putting together uh, everything as soon as possible. In the case of Iberia that we announced it today, it was not a government effort. It was Iberia getting back to reopen the, their itineraries. So what we're, you know, we should be seeing a, a, a more, you know, invol involvement from the tourism company in the air access pro process. Obviously, the, the VMO is in charge of the marketing side of this, but if you don't have a product to market, you know, to do marketing, what, what are you going to sell, right? And then let's talk about casinos, because I want to get that in, because it's very important. Puerto Rico's economy is heavily dependent on what, you know, casinos generate. So how do you propose a safe uh, reopening that makes sense for casinos? Yeah, I have been working very closely with the uh, 16 casinos in Puerto Rico and all the owners and operators of those uh, casinos. And uh, they put together a very detailed uh, PowerPoint presentation uh, that includes all their uh, safety measures and preventive measures uh, to operate the casinos. They right took uh, a right lot, lot well, they took Las Vegas uh, uh, protocol, they took the American Gaming Association protocol, and they actually uh, took it a step further and, and made it even more uh, uh, complete uh, to some degree. Uh, a, a distancing, shutting off X amount of machines between each operating machine to have the people distance side by side uh, in the lateral form. Uh, they took the circular uh, carousels and they uh, shut off every other machine so that people in, in, in the carousel are separated. Uh, they reduced the table uh, number of people. So a table that before held nine positions, may hold three or four with separations. Uh, there are no uh, spectators, so only the players are allowed in the casino. You can't have uh, children or teenagers or hangarounds or spouses that basically Right. We don't play. Uh, so, in, 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 in sanit sanitizers and what have you, a tremendous amount of sanitizing of machines and everything, that, the touch points, as we call them. You're going so to them on, that, gonna have to put them on every machine because people will. Every machine, up, and, 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 and basically, be, be, right. after a machine is used, somebody has to come and, and sanitize the machine. But they've developed the protocols, uh, and they're convincing enough. I think one thing that, that, that I want to mention here is that the, the casinos are highly regulated uh, in Puerto Rico. They have both the local and federal agencies. And the local, uh, no, no casino can open without an inspector, okay, a government inspector. So they're accustomed to operating under very stringent regulatory conditions already. If they're given the proper restrictions, and the proper regulations, they will adhere to them as they do to all the other. We've never had a, a, an incident or a scandal in the tourism industry or in the, in the, uh, in the casino industry. Uh, so it, it attests to the fact that we have good oversight. These people are accustomed to that. So I think it's a matter of, of uh, letting them uh, do the protocols as they have designed them and, and get operating. Why? Because quite frankly, the tourism company needs to get the cash flow. You know, we, 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 we failed to, to take into account that right now, whether it's the DMO or the tourism company promoting the local tourism, the fact of the matter is that that money comes from somewhere and it comes from room tax and it comes from casino uh, tax. And as a consequence, they, they, they don't have either one. That's putting a very difficult financial condition on both the DMO, the tourism company, and such to be able to get back to doing the marketing because that's where the money comes from. One, one and by the way, the cruise industry, mm -hmm. okay, the cruise industry, I think we can't take our eyes off of, even though we're talking about August, the fact of the matter is, is that they're a very big contributor to the, to the tourism sector because if you look at the you know, on any day when you see three or four cruise ships down in Old San Juan and you look at the number of buses and tour operators servicing them and the people selling piraguas and, and dulce de coco and, and, the, and the artesanos and, and so forth, you realize that this is a, 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 an industry that's not only the big hotels with five, six hundred rooms, but it goes down to the guy that's scraping 
an ice cone in old San Juan in front of the Ochoa building. Let me let me get to another aspect which we haven't discussed, but it falls under you know the hotels, which are the paradores, the small inns. Um, these people also need help um, getting back to you know to what they do. Um, many paradores are appealing to the local tourists, the internal tourism. Um, you know, what do you think they need, and how you know how can you know the industry help or the government help? What do paradores need to do? to get back online. Yeah, the, the, paradores for the, the, the paradores for the most part are back online. Uh, you know, they have, uh, they, they have their, their local clientele, and which has been very good. If you look at the fact there are over 500,000 people working in Puerto Rico, and many of those were government employees who received a salary and bonus, and a lot of them were uh, private whether they were pharmaceutical or support facility, they haven't gone anywhere. They've been they've been on lockdown. Uh, they're not going to go to Disney this year. They're not going to travel overseas. They're going to spend uh, that that dollar in, in the local market. And the Paradores have a great opportunity. As far as long term, there are fifty million dollars, which is not a big number. It sounds big, but fifty million dollars for an industry uh, like tourism is not that much. But at least there's something there that will be distributed somehow in some formula so that everybody gets a fair share. And the Paradores should be able to recover some of their losses of, of, that they've had over the last three months, if not all. Of it. Definitely, um, you know. Like in regard, in regard, in regards to Michelle, in regards to Paradores, uh -huh. you ask how the government can help. Well, if they if they lift some of the restrictions in place, that's the the best way to help Paradores to recover because this is this is high season for them. Okay, right. the summer it's high season for them. So the best the government can do is lift most of the restrictions. Okay. that are in place so they can open and offer their full capacity to the local customer. So I guess we're going to have to wait until June 15 to see what happens because we're currently under an executive order that expires um, next week. Um, and I guess, you know, the sector will have to take it from there, right? Well, not, not necessarily. I mean, we have some, uh, we, we, we have a campaign going. We've sent the governor a couple of letters and we're working with the Department of uh, with Tourism and, and the Department of Economic Development uh, not to wait till the 15th. We believe that there are some things that can be uh, re lifted uh, before then and, mm -hmm. and allow uh, a little bit more flexibility uh, that don't have to wait. And, and so we've appealed to uh, the governor to reconsider her position on the use of beaches, on uh, the rental of kayaks and, and paddle boards and surfboards. I mean, there's no rent reason why somebody who rents a, a paddle board in, at the Condado Lagoon can't sanitize uh, the oars in the, in the paddle and the, the board so that, uh, so that they can be used uh, by somebody who wants to rent those. those. Those people who rent that and have those concessions are part of the tourism industry. Uh, it may be local tourism, but it's tourism and they, they earn their money off of the rental of that equipment. So we think there, there are things that uh, can be done. We, we're asking her to reconsider the seven o'clock uh, curfew. We, we believe that that's something that doesn't have to wait till the 15th. We would like to see that reconsideration now and, and for her to realize it, you know, typically the, 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 the local culture, the, the Hispanic culture does not eat at 5 or 5.30 in the afternoon. That's not our, 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 our dinner time, okay? So people have to be able to go to a restaurant at 7 o'clock at night and be able to be out of there by 9 and go home. Uh, that's, a, that's more normal, and that will help the, the restaurant industry. It'll put money in the waiters' pockets because right now, uh, restaurants are not bringing in their wait staff or their bus boys or their or, or their or their uh, pot washers and dishwashers because simply there's just not enough that business to warrant the payroll. So you know we have to put these people back to work. Okay, and I'm concerned when I, when Daphne shows us the, the conditions of the airport and, and I see all those people leaving. I wonder how many of those are leaving and won't come back. Right. Okay, that's and that's concerning. Daphne, you're in an industry that's also very interesting, which is the travel agency yeah. sector. 
what's going on, you know, with your group, if you know, um, you know or what's happening, you know, are they bouncing back? Are they getting back to work? What's going on with that? Well, we, we are authorized to restart uh, and not remote. We can, we can open the offices, but now you know that we need to have an auto certification. The problem that we're having is that we, we send the auto certification template and format with all you know, the protocols that we have to follow, but the government is not answering back as soon as we need it. And we have a deadline until June 10th to to have that certification in place to be to make sure that we, we you know we don't run into problem but that's that's the that's the part again of not having a a, a well thought idea of doing the entire process if you want us to follow some restrictions and some protocols we needed time to do that and unfortunately we were not given that time we were announced that we can open in 72 hours and and then after that it's that we you know we were able to start getting everything in place and and, and then again i just want to stress that because this could have been less stressful more organized better prepare for everybody across the industry and, and provide a better image to the outside world about Perico being ready. Keeping the numbers of the COVID cases increasing, not having contract trades, and, and, and you're not, not, being you know, not being properly communicative to the world, that can harm our uh, going back to regular operation. Because one thing is what we're saying, and the other thing is what the people are seeing. And believe it or not, everybody is very cautious right now to where they're traveling and you know, not only when, but how as well. Which, one, which destination they're going to choose, it's, it's our responsibility to make sure that the message is clear and that we can get the confidence that I was telling you earlier. So our customer comes back and comes, comes back as soon as possible. Well, I, I have to thank the both of you um, for your time, for the, you know, the information. Um, please keep us posted because the tourism sector is obviously, you know, very important um, to the economy and, you know, we, Puerto Rico relies on it. So please, you know, keep us posted on, on the, on what's happening. Okay. Thank you so sure. much. Daphne, have a Our good pleasure. Trip. Gracias. Ciao. Thank you.